Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about non-self-regulating control systems. Let's begin with a definition of what non-self-regulating systems are, and then we'll give a few examples to make sure that you fully understand. In the previous video, we talked about self-regulating control systems, in which a steady state can be achieved when all of the inputs are unchanging. So, a self-regulating control system does not require any user input to reach a steady state. Well, a non-self-regulated control system is quite the opposite of a self-regulating control system. That is, a non-self-regulating control system will not reach a steady state when all of the inputs are fixed. This is the most common control system we will run into throughout this control systems course, as these systems require controllers to mechanically force our system to our desired steady state. So, let's give a few examples of non-self-regulating systems so that we really understand what a non-self-regulating control system is. Let's imagine that we have a simple batch reactor with an exothermic reaction occurring within our tank. This means that as more molecules in our system react, they are releasing more energy, and our fluid in the tank is increasing in temperature because of this. Additionally, it is common for reactions to occur faster at higher temperatures, as the system has more energy. Therefore, without regulation, our system's temperature will grow exponentially, which is very dangerous, and this is called a runaway reaction. To prevent this and force our system to a steady state, we can add a cooling jacket to our tank to take some energy out of the system. Well, this makes our system non-self-regulating. Unlike self-regulating control systems, non-self-regulating control systems do have the potential for failure. In our previous example, what do you think would happen if our refrigerant pump failed? Well, then we couldn't control the temperature of our reactor anymore, and we would have a runaway reaction. However, with a proper maintenance schedule and regular replacement of potentially faulty equipment, industrial applications where failure of a non-self-regulating control system can be greatly minimized. So, just remember that a non-self-regulating control system is our primary focus throughout this course. We will be designing control systems to regulate different processes and control systems that cannot achieve steady state on their own like a self-regulating control system can. But just remember, the applications of self-regulating control systems are very, very limited. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of what non-self-regulating control systems are. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.